September 18th, 2015. I'm Drutter. And I'm Medicady. And this is the second video in our ongoing series called Power to the Patients. If you haven't seen the series introduction, please follow the link provided. We live in Vancouver, BC, Canada. For years we've been successfully fighting cancer with cannabis oil and fighting prohibition with activism. We recently were part of a protest against unfair and harmful regulations imposed by Vancouver on medical cannabis dispensaries. Our sign said cannabis cures cancer and reactions range from applause to outright scorn and attempts to silence us. Since the fact that cannabis cures cancer is easily verified by consulting the available research, and it has been for decades, we realize the general public remains extremely poorly informed about this plant. To them, an undeniable and proven fact appears to be an outright lie. As a great human said, what counts is not what sounds plausible, not what we would like to believe, not what one or two witnesses claim, but only what is supported by hard evidence rigorously and skeptically examined. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Carl Sagan from Cosmos, 1980. Here then is some of that hard evidence. We've compiled 20 of the best links on medical cannabis we could find, and the following is our summary in common language. The information is freely available online, much of it right here on YouTube. We favored peer-reviewed experiments that are transparent with their data and mixed in some incredible case studies and research findings. This is only a small sample of the excellent information available, and so much more is underway now. Cannabis is an incredible plant with dozens of potent natural medicines, and it does cure cancers, including mine. Thanks to hundreds of rock-solid scientific experiments and studies done over the past few decades, you don't have to take my word for it. Cannabis use has long been demonized as a major source of psychotic disorders such as schizophrenia, mostly through government propaganda like reefer madness in the 1930s and 40s. Studies now confirm that some cannabinoids affect psychotic symptoms through their interaction with the endocannabinoid system. Cannabidiol, or CBD, appears to prevent, treat, and cure symptoms as effectively as most currently available medications, but with almost no side effects. Colitis and Crohn's disease have symptoms like nausea, diarrhea, inflammation, pain, malnutrition, and breakdown of the digestive system. About half of sufferers are chronic cannabis users, which isn't surprising given that stimulation of cannabinoid receptors in the intestines reduces inflammation, soothes pain, and regulates gut motility. The high prevalence of cannabinoid receptors in the gastrointestinal system also explains why it treats colon cancer so well. Wikipedia has a good write-up on cannabinoid receptors, which make up the endocannabinoid system, a signaling mechanism which regulates the important body processes. There are two types of cannabinoid receptors. CB1 receptors, found mostly on brain and nerve cells, and CB2 receptors, concentrated in the immune system and gastrointestinal system. Cannabinoid receptors are found in all mammals and may be pivotal in our understanding of health and illness. Mammals can suffer from endocannabinoid deficiency, a shortage of the body's natural endogenous cannabinoids. A research paper published by GW Pharmaceuticals 12 years ago found that many ailments such as IBS, migraines, and fibromyalgia appear to be a result of endocannabinoid deficiency, which may be treated with exogenous cannabinoids. It seems the findings were used by the company to legitimize the creation of a pharmaceutical drug called Sativex instead of the right of patients to use the healing medicine of the cannabis plant directly. Success is being made using cannabis oil to treat autism, an unfortunately common disorder nowadays. Watch this news report on an Oregon family using cannabinoids to manage their severely autistic child's behavior and give him a much higher quality of life. The cannabis indica plant has been used to treat many kinds of pain for thousands of years. It can work when other methods fail, it has little or no side effects, and it works very quickly to reduce or cure pain, often for many hours. Here's an in-depth literature review on how pain is mediated through the endocannabinoid system. The active compounds in cannabis are the cannabinoids, terpenoids, and flavonoids. Many of these are also found in other plants. This website provides information on the most common cannabinoids and terpenoids, such as THC, CBD, CBC, CBN, limonene, linalool, myrcene, etc. 
In 2007, doctors at Complutense University in Spain showed cannabinoids treat cancer by acting on the body in multiple ways. In addition to alleviating many symptoms of the disease, they also block tumor angiogenesis, which is formation of blood vessels to cancerous cells. Cannabinoids also slow or stop the cancer from metastasizing to other places in the body. They also kill tumor cells by inducing apoptosis while protecting healthy cells. It appears the list of cancers cannabis doesn't cure is much smaller than the list of cancers it does. Hundreds of excellent studies from all over the world have been published in the past few years alone, which verify and expand on the findings of the one linked here. In 2005, scientists from China and North America found stimulation of CB1 receptors with cannabinoids causes proliferation and integration of neural stem cells in the hippocampus. This neural proliferation enhances learning and memory while reducing anxiety and depression. In short, smoking weed makes you happier and smarter. Many studies have confirmed these findings, which are rarely disputed in educated circles today. Researchers in Madrid showed how cannabinoids act on cells in the basal ganglia to decrease inflammation, oxidative damage, and death. This neuroprotective effect is why cannabinoids prevent, treat, and cure many degenerative diseases including Huntington's, Parkinson's, Tourette's, ALS, multiple sclerosis, and Alzheimer's. Indeed, for years we've seen cannabis treat brain damage associated with Alzheimer's disease. In this TED Talk, a man advocates this treatment, which he gives to his young twin girls, who have the fatal neurodegenerative disease known as childhood Alzheimer's. CBD oil from cannabis reduces the frequency and severity of seizures and has slowed neurodegeneration. This unique situation calls into question claims that cannabis is detrimental to the developing brain, showing instead that it prevents and heals brain damage, even in children. In the following interview, Dr. Amanda Ryman of the University of California discusses her findings that cannabis can be used as an exit drug for harm reduction in opioid and alcohol addiction. This flies in the face of decades of propaganda telling us that pot is a gateway drug into using harder drugs, but as we now know, the main offender in that regard is alcohol. Cannabis is now helping millions of people reduce their dependency on addictive and harmful prescription drugs, as well as illegal street drugs like heroin. A 2007 study published by the American Physiological Society noted that CBD in the bloodstream is anti-inflammatory and found it has a cardioprotective effect against strokes, heart attacks, and arrhythmias. It reduces the chance of damage to the heart occurring, as well as the amount of damage if it does happen. When added to the diet, the fiber and oil in hemp seeds also lowers the risk of heart disease. The parents of a baby girl suffering from epilepsy, scoliosis, and tumors had tried every steroid and anti-seizure pharmaceutical with only partial relief and side effects that were killing her. She was dying when her father turned to CBD given through her stomach tube. In minutes, her seizures stopped and she became more alert. They took her off all the other medications in favor of the Rick Simpson oil made from cannabis. She just turned two, and scans show the tumors have disappeared, the scoliosis in her spine is improving, and the seizures are under control. Thousands of stories like this one are popping up now, with many parents moving across the country so they can save their children's lives without going to jail for it. PTSD is an anxiety disorder provoked by traumatic events such as assault or long-term abuse. About one quarter of all veterans who served in the Middle East suffer from it. Cannabis has long been known to ease their symptoms, such as rumination, flashbacks, and hyperarousal. But current research suggests that the endocannabinoid system is involved, since the afflicted have lower levels of natural cannabinoids, causing their brains to lose the ability to let go. By replenishing the endocannabinoid levels with cannabinoids found in plants, researchers are bringing PTSD sufferers relief from their traumatizing flashbacks. A group of doctors in the 90s studied the effects of cannabinoids on slices of rat cortical tissue. They found that cannabinoids have strong therapeutic antioxidant properties and protect against neurotoxicity and related cell death. Their conclusion notes that cannabinoids protect the nervous system from many types of damage, strengthen healthy brain cells, and have little or no side effects. In this 2015 study from the Canadian Journal of Respiratory Therapy, Researchers note that while smoking cannabis poses health risks associated with burning plant matter, it's far less harmful than smoking cigarettes. 
but an even healthier method is a vaporizer, which runs heated air across the dried cannabis without igniting it, releasing the cannabinoids and terpenes in a vapor, free from the byproducts of combustion. Users with respiratory irritation improved symptoms and lung function after switching to a vaporizer, and reported many other health benefits. Vaporizing cannabis releases only the medicinal oils for inhaling, without burning the plant matter or releasing any smoke. Vaporizing cannabis flowers and their concentrates has become an affordable and extremely healthy alternative to smoking the plant for its medicines. Far from the prohibitionist claims that cannabis causes brain damage, we now know it protects the nervous system from harm and helps regrow lost cells. Researchers from American universities examined several recent studies of the brains of users and non-users of cannabis. They found cannabis use does not change the shape or size of associated brain structures, even in teenagers who use it every day. Research from Harvard shows that regular cannabis use helps prevent diabetes and obesity by regulating blood sugar levels. Some strains also moderate the user's appetite. Regular users have lower fasting insulin levels, lower risk of insulin resistance, smaller waist size, and lower HDL cholesterol and triglycerides, even on a high-calorie diet. In July 2015, National Green Biomed gave a $1 million research grant to Dr. Michael Malloy of UBC and St. Paul's Hospital to study the use of cannabinoids to treat and cure HIV-AIDS. In the linked video, Dr. Malloy reports on a study where infected monkeys treated with cannabis survived and went into remission. He found similar results when examining data of infected chronic human users. Thanks to the grant, exciting new research is now getting underway here in Vancouver, BC. A condensed summary like that is a lot to take in, so it may be good to bookmark or favorite this video for later use. Remember that it isn't advice, it's information to help you begin your own research and come to your own conclusions. We plan to do an updated version in the future as new research is completed and as we discover more good research that's already out there. If you've got something really good, please get in touch with us or make a comment below. We can't wait to learn more. But what you can really do to help is to spread this video. YouTube ensures videos like this are seen by as few people as possible by hiding the true view count not having it show up on subscribers' pages, and not suggesting it as a related video. The only way anyone will see this is if you show it to them. We've made it embeddable, so you can share it on Facebook, blogs, and other social media. Rate this video, then share the link with friends or family members who suffer from the conditions mentioned. We aren't doing this for the view count, we're doing it to educate people. So don't let it end with you. Please make sure somebody else sees this. A lot of this information has been out there for many years, but it spreads very slowly because of the chill caused by prohibition and stigma. Let's not be afraid to skeptically examine the evidence, to speak the truth, and accept the medical breakthroughs available with cannabis, rather than dismissing them as extraordinary claims for even one more day. Just how incredible is this natural medicine? We need more research and less prohibition so we can find out. That's why we've made the demand of no penalty for medical use or research. Power to the patients. Stay tuned for more in this series. Power to the patients.